Hey, what's up you guys? John from Old Reading Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, we are gonna talk about something uh, sort of sad that can happen with alpacas um, and something that did happen with our alpacas and why we had to rehome one of our male alpacas. And that is berserk male syndrome. So anybody who has alpacas or anybody who's looking to get alpacas should know about it, especially if you're gonna have babies and especially if you're gonna have boys. But first, let's take a look at our new baby boy, Finn. All right, so this is our little guy, Finn, who is a little bit of a surprise. And that's not his mom right there. That is seemingly his grandmother. Um, that's Maggie. She uh, does a good job of baby babysitting Finn when his mom, Susie, is busy. So you can see, I believe, that's her right there eating some hay. You'll see with Finn, if we get kind of close to him, he walks away. And now that's exactly the kind of response you want to get from boys. So what berserk male syndrome is, it's a behavioral disorder that male alpacas or llamas can get uh, when they imprint on humans. And so what that means is when they sort of are raised uh, with a lot of interaction with humans and have a lot of human handling. The males sometimes see humans as other alpacas. And since males are very territorial and they're very uh, feisty, they can start rearing up on you and they can start trying to bite your legs, trying to do all kinds of stuff. And it's really, really bad behavior. And as far as I know, and as far as like current research is, it can't be fixed. You know, it's one of those things that once it happens, it's sort of what it is. Cast that in another reason to get uh, females instead of males. Now, they do say that gelding the alpaca or castrating the alpaca before puberty generally can stop that. But since it's a behavioral disorder, sometimes that doesn't work. So what I mean when I say behavioral disorder, it's really difficult, I guess, sometimes when alpacas are bottle fed as babies for them to not imprint on humans because it's a lot of human interaction. Um, and what our vet has said is, you know, it's, it's the handling. So the more you pick them up, the more you pet them, you know, it, and it stinks because you want to be close to this guy. Where'd he go? He's still overhanging with Maggie. And it's like he's such, you know, alpacas, well, all baby animals, right? They make them cute on purpose to make sure that, you know, you take care of them. And I mean, look at that little guy. He's a cute little dude. So like, who wouldn't want to snuggle up next to that guy and, and, you know, hold him? And so that's part of the problem with males is when they're overhandled, and I guess specifically when they're bottle fed, then they really imprint on humans and it can be a big problem. But lucky for us, we've had two births on this farm so far. And both little Finn and Felix both have a healthy, you know, it's not necessarily fear, but you know, alpacas are generally standoffish. So, you know, even with Brownie here, she'll walk away from me if I get too close. So, you know, it's just one of those things, girls fight a lot less and the boys fight a lot more. So it's a nice day for a dust bath, eh ladies? So like I've said, we've had two births on this farm. We had Finn just a couple of weeks ago and Felix was born in June of last year, of 2021. You know, seeing as they were both boys, we were very careful to not overhandle them, to not overexpose ourselves to them. Um, and even though we had to bottle feed Felix for a little while, luckily it was just that first night for a couple shifts. So, and then his, his mom started, uh, feeding him so that was good so it was just good that we didn't have to bottle feed him for too long because like i said earlier it seems like that can be a big problem and since it's a learned behavior it's not really something that you can unlearn so one of the dangers of raising alpacas is you got to be really careful with what you're doing and i'm not sure if i don't think it happens to females because they don't have that same urge to fight <clears throat> and now females do fight occasionally mostly over food but they only fight for a very short amount of time and they get what I call spit lip very quickly which is like sort of a, a muscle 
paralyzation of their lower lips so that they actually can't spit anymore. And so then they stop fighting. Um, but for the most part, when they fight, it's usually like, you know, oh, you're eating food that's too close to me. Emos. And then they spit at each other for a little bit and then that's it. When the boys fight, they wrestle, they bite each other's legs, they make all kinds of noise. And it's just really unhappy for everybody. Felix, look how dirty you are. <laughs> so we, we have a hole in this hose. And when, it, when it's on at the spigot and off down here, it just sprays out right there. But it's nice because on a warm day like today, they can get a little spritz and then roll in the dirt. So if you, so we are now down here with our boy alpacas because another very important thing is to keep your boys and girls separate. And for those eagle-eyed viewers, you will notice that we are down one male alpaca. So we have here Cody, Monarch, Waffle, Winston, Felix, Dan, Carl, and Glacier. So the guy that we're missing is Ace. Ace was a very unique alpaca when we got him because he was very friendly. He would go right up to my wife, Catherine, and nuzzle her and let people scratch him and pet him. And now, if I'm being completely honest, that behavior did sort of make me feel a little nervous in the beginning because that's just not how alpacas behave. You know, we have 25 of them and only one of them does that and he's a male and he's intact and it turned out to be a problem. Now, we don't know how Ace was raised. He lived in a neighboring town with Glacier by themselves, which is fine. And they had a very loving family. They took great care of those two. They ended up having a bear break into their pasture and Ace did get attacked. And so, and they never had any problems with him like this. So my assumption is he probably had a bit of this berserk male syndrome his entire life. And then maybe when he got attacked by the bear, that trauma sort of brought it out more. And then I think also being in contact with all of our boys here must have caused a bigger problem because Ace, I'm Ace, Glacier is very submissive. He's not a lead alpaca for the most part. So we have uh, Monarch, who's an adult, and he's intact. Carl is an adult. Where's Carl? Carl's right behind Glacier. He's an adult, and he's intact. And we have three little boys that are intact. But what we noticed would happen is, well, first of all, when we first brought Ace and Glacier home, we put them in a separate pasture that was adjacent to where our other boys were. And we found that both Ace and Glacier jumped over the fence to be with them. So that was, you know, note number one of, you know, maybe troubling behavior. Uh, but we didn't think that much of it at the time. I mean, because they all seemed to be getting along okay. And then when we brought Dan home, it was this big fella right here. That was a few weeks later or maybe a month. And then... So we put Dan in the separate pasture, because usually what we do is we separate everybody. We do a fecal test on them to make sure they don't have any worms or parasites that we can't handle. And if they do, we treat them. If they don't, then we're able to put them with everybody else. But so we had most everybody in one pasture and we had Dan in the other pasture. Ace and Glacier jumped over the fence again to be with Dan. Once again, sort of troubling behavior. So, what ended up happening is we noticed that they were fighting a lot. Like there were just boy fights going on nonstop. I mean, nonstop, like three or four times a day, there would be, you hear this like shrieking of alpacas fighting and going on and on and on. And it was, it stunk, you know, cause we had them up by our house. We would have to go break up the fights all the time interesting side note Dan does this all the time he'll come right up to us and act like he wants to get pet but then if you try to touch him he'll kick you so I don't know Dan what are you trying to do here buddy how about that yeah okay so stay back then so anyway 
So we were having a lot of fighting, and now we just sort of figured that that was what happens when you have nine boys all together, you know. Boys will be boys. But then what started to happen is Ace would start coming after me. And it was really... It was really, it was kind of subtle at first. So he would always follow us, and especially me, uh, whenever we were in the pasture, he would just follow me nonstop. He would always be in my business and whatever I was doing. And then there were a couple times where he would rear up on me. So he would go on his back legs and, you know, try to get on top of me. So that was very troubling, obviously. And I really didn't appreciate it. So, you know, at that time, it was really, you know, very rare. It was only every once in a while. And it would only happen to me, you know, because if it, if it had started happening to Catherine, who's much smaller than I am, because, you know, I'm six foot four, I'm 240 pounds. I'm bigger than Ace. So, like, I'm not too worried about it. And, you know, it would take him, like, really doing a sneak attack for him to take me out. But you can't put that past him. But anyway, it, it started getting, you know, a little bit more and a little bit more. And then there was one time I came down here and there was a big fight. And what happened a lot of times is, you know, like I said, so Glacier, who's the gray one way over here, he was very submissive unless Ace was getting into it with somebody. When Ace was fighting with somebody, Glacier would like jump in and be on Ace's side. And a lot of times they would end up and I would come down here and both him and Ace were on top of one of our little guys. Which, you know, these guys are a year old. So we can't have fully fledged adult alpacas attacking them. And have these alpacas attacking me. So then there was one day where I came down here and I broke up a fight that was really bad. This one was particularly bad. So I came in and I broke it up. And then Ace started coming after me. And it was, it was big time. And it was a little bit scary because he, he had a look in his eye that was very like... Not right. So I'll show you a clip of what happened right here, uh, right now. Get! So yeah, so that was really no good. And that was sort of the, the final straw for me where I was just like, you know, we can't be doing this anymore. It's becoming a hazard for me. So we posted on one of our local Facebook group, not a local Facebook group, but an alpaca rehoming group, explained the entire situation. And we actually had an animal sanctuary who was able to deal with it, come and pick them up. So I really think that being in with this many other boys and the trauma of the bear attack really triggered this sort of behavior in him. You know, I think he did have it sort of all along, but it, w it obviously wasn't a problem until recently. That's our story with Berserk Male Syndrome. If you are looking into getting alpacas, I would suggest starting with some either gelded males or females. The girls are just so much nicer, so much easier to deal with. They don't fight as much. So make sure if you get alpacas and they are boys, don't handle them very much. Let them be with other alpacas. Let them grow up with other alpacas and just sort of keep your distance. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And as always, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.